In question number four, we've been given the graph of f, and it says f be a continuous function defined on the closed interval, the graph of s considering, consisting of four line segments above. And it says, let g be the function defined as g of x is equal to the area under the curve of f from 0 to x. Okay, so g of x is defined as area, and it's based on starting at 0. So that's really important to, to note that the, area, the function is defined from the area starting at 0. Okay, part A says that on the open intervals of G, where is it concave up and give reasons? Okay, the reason we're going to give is based on a concavity chart. And the concavity can be determined when the second derivative of G changes sign or when the derivative of G, or sorry, the derivative of g which is f where f changes direction so where the second derivative changes sign is when the slope of the slope changes sign or where the slope of the slope changes direction okay so we could be looking at these two situations where we're looking for concavity on the g prime graph or the f graph so we can see here that on this graph it changes direction at negative two and positive two. Okay, so that's where we're gonna be looking for concavity. So I've got my endpoints here. I really need to make a note of the, the negative two. Okay, we have undefined second derivative because it's a kink, but on the left, we know that it is sloping up. So we know that it must be concave up. Okay, so that's positive slope here, so it's concave up. On the, left, on the right, we know it's sloping down, so it's going to be sloping down here. So it's concave down, so we know that that's an inflection point there. We have an another non-differential point at 0. We test between 0 and 2, which is the other non-differentiable point at the kink. Okay, so when between 0 and 2, we know we're still sloping down. So it's still negative concavity here. And then on the other side of two, we can see that it's changing from sloping down to sloping up. So that's positive second derivative or concave up. Okay, so where on what open intervals is the graph concave up? Well, we can see that, that it is concave up in this interval here, this interval here, and this interval here. So the answer then is going to be, the interval is going to be from negative four to negative two, and from two to positive six. Okay, or we can write it like this. With the inequality signs as well. Part B. Let p be the function defined by g of x times f of x. So just call, color code that. So there's my g of x times f of x. And find the p prime at 3. Okay, so this problem involves differentiating notation. And since we have a product, we're going to have to apply the product rule. So differentiating this notation, I get p prime of x is equal to I'm going to differentiate this. It's going to be g prime of x times the f of x function plus the g function times f prime. Okay, so I need to have g prime. Well, g prime and f are really the same thing. Okay, so I've kind of established that g prime and f are the same thing. And I need to find the g value at, in this case, it's going to be at 3. And I need to find the f prime value or the slope on the f graph at 3 as well. Okay, so I'm just going to plug that in. So then evaluating p prime of 3, I need g prime at 3. 
which is the same as f of 3. Okay, so these values are actually the same, and maybe I'll just write this over here in the margin, that f of 3 is equal to g prime of 3, because they're the same function, plus g of 3 and f prime, or the slope of the f graph at 3. Okay, so f of 3, if I take a look at this function, f of 3 is going to be equal to that value there. So the y value of the f at x equals 3 is going to be negative 3. So I'm going to plug that in. That's going to be negative 3, which then also makes g prime of 3 negative 3 because they are the same function. Okay, so I'll just make that look a little neater here. Okay, then I need to establish what g of 3 is. Well, g of 3 is going to be found by using that definition. g of 3 is going to be equal to the area from 0 to 3 under the f function. So from 0 to 3, I'm going to shade in from 0 to 1. That's going to cancel out with the area from 1 to 2. And then the g of 3 is going to then be really just the area of that trapezoid here. Okay, So that area of that trapezoid works out to be 3.5. I can just see that by looking at the number of squares that it covers. And so g of 3 is equal to 3.5. So I'm going to plug that in. g of 3 is 3.5. Okay, the last thing is I need to find the slope of f at 3. So the slope of f at 3 is going to be the slope of this line through that blue dot. The slope of that line through the blue dot is going to have a slope of 1. So f prime at 3 is equal to 1. So then going to here, I'm going to plug in 1. There I have all the terms I need to be able to solve for this. So I end up with 9 plus 3.5. So that gives me the f p prime value of 12.5. So that is the slope of the p-graph at x equals 3.